Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we're diving into the latest news about the Indianapolis Colts. I'm excited to share my thoughts and opinions, so let's get into it. First up, we've got some big news. Juju Brents might miss the entire season. He's dealing with an injury and has been placed on injured reserve. To fill the gap, the Colts have signed Chris Lammon, David Long Jr., Kelvin Joseph, and Ronnie Harrison to the roster. That's four new faces in our secondary, and it looks like they might see action as early as this Sunday against the Packers. Now, I'm not sure exactly how things will play out, but Long Jr., Joseph, and Lammon are solid corners. Still, I'm a bit concerned because the Colts' secondary has a tough job ahead. The AFC is packed with top-notch quarterbacks, probably the most talent the conference has ever seen. In week one, I thought the Colts' secondary held its own against the Houston Texans. But with Brents out, I'm feeling a bit uneasy. The Colts will face the Packers in week two, and thankfully Jordan Love won't be playing. If he were, I'd be a lot more worried about our chances. We should be able to handle the game against Malik Willis, but it's going to be a competitive match, especially playing at Lambeau Field, where it's always loud and challenging. Looking back at week one, the Colts played a close game against the Texans, losing by just two points. It felt like they were their own worst enemies at times. So heading into week two, we should be able to take care of business. As for Anthony Richardson, he had a solid performance. He's coming off a major injury, but looked great. His shoulder didn't seem to be holding him back. He even made a fantastic 62-yard pass to Alec Pierce, one of the longest in Colts history. Richardson showed the potential we were hoping for, using his legs, strength, and arm confidently. However, the Colts struggled with their run game against the Texans, which put them in too many third and longs. They managed to convert some of those, but moving forward, we need to establish a stronger run game and improve our quick passing. Richardson can make big plays, but we need him to master those quick passes, especially since that's where teams like the Texans excel. All right, let's talk strategy. Teams like the Chiefs are a great example of how to handle quick passes. They get rid of the ball in under 2.7 seconds, keeping the offense moving and putting pressure on defenses. If the Colts can master this quick passing game, they'll see improvements. As for Jonathan Taylor, we all know he's capable of more than the 16 carries for 48 yards he had in week one. That's a rough start, but it's behind us now. We'll learn from it and move forward. Looking back at week one, it's worth noting that the Texans are a strong team. They're one of the best in football, and they've recently won a playoff game. So even though we didn't get the win, the Colts' performance was promising. The team's drive and determination to win were evident, and the culture is definitely moving in the right direction. But now it's time to focus on getting those wins. Chris Ballard, the Colts' GM, has been sticking to his guns and hasn't signed many new players, even with injuries and changes. While he did bring in a few veterans for the practice squad, like the ones we talked about, it seems like he's taking a conservative approach. We've seen the team struggle since Andrew Luck retired, making the playoffs just once. Ballard's decisions, like not addressing key positions in the past, have been a concern. Will Ballard be the right fit for the Colts going forward? We'll find out soon. But right now, with Juju Brents injured, it's hard to stay optimistic. Hopefully some of the practice squad players will step up and make a difference. Looking ahead to the Packers game, I'm excited. Greg Olson will be calling the game, and he's one of my favorite announcers. It'll be great to hear his insights during the match in Green Bay. From what I saw in the Eagles-Packers game, the Packers struggled with run defense, allowing Saquon Barkley to have a big game. This could mean a great opportunity for Jonathan Taylor to shine. On defense, the Colts need to shut down Josh Jacobs and put the Packers in third and long situations. If Malik Willis has to rely on his arm, that could work in our favor since Anthony Richardson's arm talent is top notch compared to Willis. All right, here's the plan. If the Colts can force the Packers into third and long situations and shut down their run game, they'll be in a good position. If we can do that, we'll limit their scoring opportunities. On offense, we don't need to blow out the Packers to win. A close win is still a win. Sure, a score of 12, nine wouldn't be the most exciting, but it's better than losing. What's important is that we win, stay healthy, and then shift our focus to the Bears in week three. For the Packers game, I want to see the Colts use a quick passing game, establish a solid run game, and score touchdowns. Defensively, we need to keep our points allowed low. Facing Malik Willis might seem daunting, but our defense should be able to handle it. We've got tough games ahead with the Bears, Steelers, and Jaguars, and we need to be ready for any challenge. Even though the Bears and Steelers didn't score much in week one, 
and the Jaguars weren't impressive, each of these teams can still pose a threat. So beating the Packers is crucial. We can't afford to start the season zero, two, especially if the Texans go two, zero. That would put us in a tough spot early on. The Colts have a lot of talent, probably the best we've had since 2018. Anthony Richardson is key to how our season goes. He showed promise in week one, but there were some issues, like our run game and pass protection. Our defense and receivers looked good overall, though Alec Pierce and Michael Pittman had their moments. The Colts' biggest concerns are a quiet game from Jonathan Taylor and struggles with third and longs. Thankfully, Shane Steichen is our head coach, and he's one of the smartest in football. He'll help get the team back on track. After the game, I was a bit down for about 20 minutes, but then I realized we've got a strong team that will make some noise this season. The Texans know we're a real threat, and we'll show that as we move forward. That's all for today. Peace out.